Hey everyone, welcome to the Unconnoisseur channel, where we're going to talk about our jazz journey. This is an introduction video, so let me start by introducing myself. My name is Matt, and I'll be your co-host for the journey. My brother Drew and I started our journey for a couple of different reasons. About a year ago, we had a phone call that enlightened both of us. It had to do with music. Basically, we were getting burned out of listening to the same old stuff. So we started recommending music for each other to listen to. That worked for a couple of weeks. Then he got this magazine from Jazzwise with the top 100 albums that shook the world. Neither one of us knew a lot about jazz, so we agreed to just go through the journey of the top 100 albums one at a time, starting with number 100. That's a brief story about how our journey began. Now for me. Here's a short history of where I'm at musically. Growing up, taking piano lessons and spending a lot of my youth practicing that instrument gave me a foundation of music. It's never fun to learn about scales, chords, and intervals, but that's where my teacher started me. At about 12, I was given a cornet. It was actually given to me by my uncle, who was also a major influence for me starting that instrument. In the eighth grade, I went to a magnet school for music, and my band instructor saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. He was also my private lesson teacher for the trumpet. I had several different private instructors for that instrument throughout my middle and high school years, and I just want to say thank you to each and every one of them. After high school marching band, yes, I was in band for all four years, I served in the Army as a bandsman, keeping my aspirations of music alive for the next eight years. I got to play with a lot of talented and professional musicians during that time. You'll hear more stories from that time of my life throughout the next coming weeks, I'm sure, so I won't go into much more of that now. Cut to about 2015, and I started a second job, side hustle, as a wedding DJ for a local company here in my hometown. I got to play a lot of music every weekend, and I loved how the nights took on a vibe of their own each week. Some nights, the parties were great, and some nights, well, no matter what I did, I just couldn't get people to the dance floor. I bet you jazz musicians feel that way sometimes when they perform as well. Today, some of my favorite bands are Need to Breathe, Rush, Sting, Sister Hazel, Gaelic Storm, Pat Metheny, and Wynton Marsalis. Kind of all over the place, right? I'm sure you'll hear me in the next couple of weeks quote a Need to Breathe song. Music, for me, is a mood thing. Depending on what kind of mood I'm in, or what kind of mood I want to get to, depends on what I want to listen to. Do you guys feel that way too? Since starting our jazz journey, a whole new world of music has opened up to me and brought in so much more music to listen to. It's an exciting genre of music and I can't wait to begin this journey. Please subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of stuff to talk about and as much fun as it will be for us hosting this channel, uh, talking together, we want to hear about your jazz journey too. You can comment on the videos, of course, or you can head over to theunconnoisseur.com and check out some further conversations and more in-depth stuff each week. We are not experts on this subject. We are not connoisseurs of this subject. Our opinions may differ from yours. Our ratings may differ from yours. Some, sometime we're going to rate on how we feel or how the music makes us feel. Some weeks we may rate on the quality of the music. We are not here to criticize any artist. We are simply expressing our opinion about the music and how it makes us feel. We look forward to sharing our journey, but even more, we look forward to hearing from you. My name is Drew, and I'm one of the co-hosts of The Unconnoisseur. As a young child, I had taken piano lessons and spent many hours practicing scales and chords and more scales. I said practicing, 
I wouldn't say I was ever really playing the piano. In the middle school, I played the trombone and then off to the tuba in high school for a couple of years. I enjoyed those years on tuba in concert, marching, and in pep band. At the end of high school and early into college, I was into the sounds of heavy metal, a bit of a stretch from the classical piano and the marching band for sure. I moved to Austin, Texas for a new perspective shortly after automotive tech school. When I first moved to Austin, I enjoyed the music of a few local bands, mostly at Antone's or at Saxon Pub. I enjoyed catching the shows of Austin's own Malford Mulligan and the singer-songwriter Stephen Bruton. I'd also got involved with the local church and the Tuesday night services they had for young professionals, as well as a downtown church, Austin First Baptist, where I spent many years enjoying the choir at one and the contemporary Christian music at the other. During my time at First Baptist Church in Austin, I went through a seminary extension program where I studied and graduated with a diploma in Christian ministry. During my time in ministry, I had the chance to meet many great people, a lot of which worked outside of the walls of the church. I still believe that church happens outside of the walls. Church and music have always played a part in my life in some form or fashion. Years passed as I worked in different sales jobs around Austin. And thanks to a good friend, James, I landed an opportunity in photography, and my creative outlet became a great job. Shortly after my daughter was born, our family moved to Seattle for a few years, where I honed many more skills as an interior design photographer. However, being married to a solar-powered Texan, it was time to head back. Back in Austin, I found a standard rut. Work, sleep, repeat and sometimes skip sleep. I was stuck in that rut until my daughter began taking saxophone lessons in middle school from a legendary sax player, Joe Morales, at the beginning of COVID shutdown. During those years, she had the opportunity to play and to practice over the internet. But in summer of 2022, she had an opportunity to spend one week at the Texas Jazz and Blues Camp here in Austin. This camp was put on by the New School of Music Austin. During that week, she played and studied music with students from all over Texas under the leadership of many great instructors. On the last day of camp, they held a concert for family and friends to the listen to the music that the students had been working on during the week. That hour of jazz was a turning point for me. Until that day of recitals, I had never really listened to jazz music, so I was curious as to what I had been missing, and more importantly, what my daughter was playing in music. So I started to listen to different albums. During the rest of that year, I began to really hear the music. Later that year at Christmas, I received a book, a special publication from Jazzwise, The 100 Jazz Albums That Shook the World. I started to listen to some of the albums on that list. We began to swap recommendations of other music to try on. We tried that for a few weeks, texting back and forth, trying out some new stuff. And that was great. I learned a lot, as I kind of expected to. Then one day, I told him where I was getting the albums I was listening to. We spoke about trying out the top 100, starting from 100. Worst case... We just go back to swapping out the albums that we had been picking and enjoying up until that time. Well, the rabbit hole opened, and we're still heading down into it today. Thank you for watching our bio videos. Hopefully you learned a little bit about who we are and why we've decided to choose jazz music and why we're doing our countdown from 100 to 1 of the jazz albums that shook the world. We look forward to your comments. We look forward to you liking and subscribing to the channel. But more important, we hope that someone out there finds jazz for the first time and starts to enjoy it the way we have. We'll see you on the channel.